On this cold and snowy winter afternoon, I invite you into my home to paint some watercolor and gouache winter botanicals with me. Hello my friends, welcome. My name is Shada and on this channel we get creative together. I have a really fun, simple video for you today. We've been doing a lot of watercolor lately and if you love watercolors, there's another medium that I think you might really enjoy and that is gouache. Gouache is a water-based medium that is highly opaque, so it's kind of a midway point between watercolors and acrylics. You need to mix in a lot of water. You don't use them right out of the tube, so same thing as watercolor paints. And guess what? We're going to paint some winter botanicals. So we're sticking with the subject matter that we know and love, and we're going to combine the gouache medium with watercolors. They work very beautifully together. We're doing these little mini paintings that are super approachable and perfect for the holiday season. This would make great greeting cards. So let's get started. Working with gouache isn't all that different from working with watercolor, so here's what we'll be using. I have a pad of paper that I like to use as my painting surface, that's all it is. And then for gouache, I picked up some tubes of Windsor & Newton gouache, and I have simple basic colors like a blue and indigo, um, there's red, white, Van Dyke brown, and olive green, and that's most of what I'm going to use today. I also will be using watercolors um, just to have something familiar. So go ahead and grab whatever watercolor set you usually paint with. We've got a palette, paper towel for blotting on, some clean water. We can use any paper. It doesn't matter. Whatever you use for watercolor, use that. But I love these little sheets of ripped handmade paper. And then grab some round brushes in sizes like a number three or four, maybe a six or an eight. And having a wash brush is also nice since we're doing some large backgrounds to start with. And that's where we're going to begin. I'm going to mix up some colors to use as backdrops for my gouache painting. So we'll begin with a familiar medium. We'll start with watercolor backgrounds and then we'll move into the gouache portion of our little art project. So I just mixed up a really creamy beige there. Lots of white and water mixed with a little hint of brown. And that's the first color that I'm laying down on my little ripped paper. Remember, all the supplies are linked in the video description if you're interested in any of them. But you just want to play with your watercolors. Work a little wet into wet. You can use dark colors. You can use light colors. Gouache, remember, is a highly opaque water-based medium. So even if you did a black or navy backdrop here, you can paint on top of it with gouache and that gouache is going to stand out beautifully. So you see me using colors um, like kind of a gray blue and a Payne's gray, a green. I did sort of a yellowy. I just painted a whole bunch and uh, here they are. I'm gonna lay them out to dry and then we'll start mixing our gouache while those dry. So as I said, I have some really basic colors. If you go to the art store, you don't have to buy every gouache that you see hanging there. I recommend purchasing similar colors to what you find yourself using with watercolors. For me, that is olive green, indigo, Van Dyke brown. Uh, obviously having a little red and a yellow is great for mixing. I like to mix with white. And with gouache, it's going to come out of the tube the consistency of like a toothpaste. And you need to mix enough water in that it's like a soupy or milky consistency. You don't want to paint gua with gouache straight out of the tube, as tempting as that may be. You need to mix water in and it will still be very opaque, I promise you. You see me mixing lots of water into my colors here. I did want to add a little magenta to the red just to cool it down and make it more of a pinky red. And as usual, I add a little bit of brown to my red to mute it slightly so that it's not, you know, too bright. It's not a bright primary red. Once I've mixed a nice dark evergreen and a brown and a 
pretty cool red, I am going to begin my first painting. We're just gonna tape that in place so it's not curling and moving all over the place. And the first thing I wanna work on is a red berry branch. And I just happen to have one here so I can use that as my subject. You wanna look at the way the berries are growing. You don't have to work from life. You can work from a library book or Google images. But having a photo or the real thing on hand will help you paint this in a way that really rings true. So I'm looking to the little branch on my table here as my guide for this painting. And I can see right away that the berries sort of cluster together on each branch. So what I'm doing here is painting little clusters of berries. Then I'm gonna grab some of that brown gouache on a clean brush, of course. And we are going to join all these little clusters together using a little bit of brown. And I kind of just shake and wiggle the paintbrush a little so that the branch well, so that it looks like a branch, so that it doesn't look too straight or smooth. I want it to look rough and woody. Um, the nice thing about gouache is that it stands out beautifully on my dark gray watercolor that I've already laid down. And you can see that it is wonderfully opaque. I'm going to finish painting my stems and then I'll set that aside to dry. We'll come back to it once that first layer has dried completely. Next up, we're going to work from life again. I am using a little cedar sprig here. Uh, it's beautiful lacy sort of pine, very fine. And I'm using a mix of olive green and indigo here with lots of water on a little number three round brush. And I like to start at the very top for this sort of pine and just paint that that really fine little end piece. You can see it's made up of all these tiny little pine fingers. Each branch is so delicate and that's the way I'm going to paint it. One little branch at a time, all connected to the main center stem. So once we study either the photo or the thing itself, it's really easy to capture some of the core elements and to replicate them on our paper. It doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, it should be a little weird, a little wonky. Nobody wants to see like a perfectly symmetrical cedar sprig. They should look like they do in nature, organic and a little bit weird. Once I've painted about two thirds of the way down the evergreen, I like to grab a little bit of that brown and add a brown stem. I know the one on my desk is green, but I like to add a little bit of a second color here just to keep my painting interesting. And we'll add a brown stem and then we will add just a few more branches down at the bottom and we can kind of take that brown and work it up higher into the evergreen or a cedar sprig if you like. But that's it for that one. We're gonna set it aside and let it dry. We'll move on to the next one. So next I wanna try painting a little bit of white pine and that's the one with the really long, thin um, needles. So I'm starting with kind of a Y shape using my Van Dyke Brown, keeping it bumpy and messy. And then I turn the paper around because I like to pull the little brush towards my body when I paint these long, super thin needles. And each needle is gonna be a little different. At times it's almost like you're dry brushing, just running that brush ever so lightly across the paper and picking up a little bit of the texture so that you get these broken brush strokes and the needle looks like it's barely there or like it's almost in motion. At other times you might um, make a, th a thicker needle, whether on purpose or accidentally, and that's okay too, just as long as you have lots of these hair thin needles surrounding the thicker ones. And you can see here, I started with that Y shape and I'm doing two sort of big fan shapes of needles and it really gives me that white pine look and that one is a lot of fun to paint.
Our next pine is going to be a blue spruce. So I'm actually mixing a bit of white gouache with the olive green and the indigo to give me this dark bluey green. And don't forget to mix lots of water in because you can see how beautifully smooth the paint goes onto the paper. And I'm holding lots of that gouache in my round brush, just like we do with the watercolor painting. You're going to be able to hold a lot of paint in the belly of the brush and then you use just the delicate tip of that round brush to um, make all these tiny little needles so you're not constantly having to go back to the palette to pick up more paint. And this one is painted like the other ones, one little branch at a time with tons of tiny little needles all along it. So it's really just about taking the time to do it and add as many little branches as you like with lots of needles in between. Once you've done the first layer, you don't even have to wait for it to dry. You can mix a little more indigo and olive green into your gouache and come back and add a bit of a darker needle to the, to the branch and it really makes everything everything pop. All right, finally, I was going to end it there, but it wouldn't be a Shada Campbell video if we didn't just make up a fun flower just because. So for the last and final um, little gouache painting, I just wanted to do a flower that I felt like painting. So just like with watercolor, we're painting these tiny little flowers one petal at a time. Some can be barely more than a blob, and I promise you it will look like a flower when we're finished with it. Then we're taking that dark green, remember it's all of green with a little indigo mixed in and we're using that round brush just the very tip of the brush to paint these delicate stems and then you can run the belly of the brush across the page with just one or two brush strokes and you'll get these beautiful organic leaf shapes and we're just adding tons of little leaves and stems and branches flip the paper around if you feel like that would be a more fluid motion for you pulling the brush towards your body and then once the white has dried you can use a little of that Van Dyke brown and we're just going to put some little spots there to indicate the stamen at the center of the flower. Maybe add a little more white if um, yours looks a little faded. And that's it, you've got a fun little wintry flower. Now the final thing we're going to do is come back to our first project, the little berries, and we're just going to add some little brown dots on some of them and maybe some little stems. And that just brings them to life. It's as simple as that. And we are all done. I hope you enjoyed painting these mini watercolor and gouache winter botanicals with me. If you enjoy this content, please hit the subscribe button. It helps this channel so much when you simply subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll See you soon with a new tutorial.